narcissism is a virus. Narcissism is a global pandemic. It rages throughout the earth, across cultures, civilizations, and societies. I'm going to teach you how to vaccinate yourself. The virus of narcissism evades your immunity and attacks you unexpectedly. You need to be prepared. You need to be protected. And above all, you need to make sure it never happens again. Stay tuned. Here is what you need to know. These are insights borrowed from the sciences of virology and epidemiology and applied to the pseudoscience of psychology. In 1998, I granted my first interview on narcissism. It was titled The Ambassador of Narcissism. And there I said that narcissism is an epidemic. Many years later, Keith Campbell used it as the title of his book, The Narcissism Epidemic. Narcissism can be easily compared to a virus. First of all, the incidence and prevalence of narcissism in the global population and especially among the younger generation is exploding. There's no other way to describe it. Young people are five times as likely to be narcissistic or full-fledged narcissists than older generations. We have studies by Twenge, Campbell, numerous others to substantiate this. Social media had contributed to the emergence of this pandemic, but it is a pandemic. What can the sciences of virology, epidemiology, and medicine in general teach us on how to protect ourselves? Well, first of all, for a virus to spread, the virus needs a naive, susceptible population, a population that had never been exposed to this virus before and therefore has no immune, ready-made immune response. In 1995, when I started my work and coined the phrase narcissistic abuse, the population was definitely naive and susceptible. People didn't know anything about narcissism. They didn't know how to identify it. They didn't know how to defend themselves against it. They didn't know what to do. There were no prescriptive measures, no strategies, nothing. There was one huge vacuum. Even among scholars, there were serious disagreements as to what on earth is narcissism to start with. You had Freud who said that narcissism is a fixation on an early phase of development with emphasis on autoeroticism, especially sexual autoeroticism. You had Jung, who said that narcissism is healthy, actually, but it can go awry in the process of constellating the self, creating the self. In the process of introversion, narcissism can take over and become malignant. You had Melanie Klein and her followers, including Otto Kernberg, Harry, Harry Gantry, many of the object relation schools, Fairbairn and others, who said that narcissism are actually a schizoid phenomenon. Problems, it's a problem of people who withdraw their emotions, withdraw their involvement, withdraw their object relations and internalize it. They don't interact with other people properly or at all. You had someone like Kohut who said that narcissism is a problem with the self-object, etc., etc. There was massive, substantial, fundamental disagreement as on what on earth is narcissism to start with. And then if you don't know what it is, how, how can you shield yourself from it? The situation is reminiscent to what had happened when, what happens when new viruses emerge, when we don't know anything about the new virus and there are great massive debates in the med medical community as to what is the virus, how does it propagate, how does it infect, how should we protect ourselves, etc. This was the situation in 1995. So the population at large, laymen, 
were definitely naive and susceptible. They were open to infection with narcissism in two ways, as victims of narcissists in a process that I described as narcissistic abuse, and as victims of complex trauma, CPTSD, who develop narcissistic and psychopathic reactions, traits, and behaviors, narcissistic and psychopathic overlay. So very much like vampires and zombies, if you were bitten by a narcissist, you could either become one or you could die mentally, sometimes physically. So here was the virus of narcissism unleashed on an unsuspecting, gullible, open, empathic, receptive, naive, susceptible population. And the experts couldn't agree as to what it was and what should be done. That was 1995. Now, every virus has a life cycle. It starts as what we call a wild type. A wild type is the prototype, the template, the initial virus. It could be a zoonotic virus, virus that is transferred from an animal to a human being, and it could be human-to-human -human transmission virus, but it's a wild type. Gradually, as the virus replicates within cells, there are replication errors. There are mistakes in the copying of the virus, and the virus begins to mutate. These mistakes are called mutations. So slowly, we are beginning to have mutant viruses, viruses which are not exactly identical copies of the original. Most of these mutations, the overwhelming vast majority of these mutations are benign or even helpful. Viruses end up becoming enfeebled and weak and finally peter out and die owing to such mutations. The Spanish flu ended this way when the virus had mutated to its own disadvantage and couldn't infect people anymore. So mutations are not a bad thing. But if your mutations accumulate, they can become dangerous, especially if they accumulate on critical parts of the virus. For example, the spike or the membrane. So in this case, we have isolates, also known as variants. They are sufficiently recognizable as the wild type original, but they have important changes and alterations which allow them to enhance one or more traits, such as transmissibility, how contagious they are, how deadly they are, how lethal they are. So we have variants or isolates. And then finally, if a sufficient number of mutations accumulate, we have strains. Strains are deviations from the wild type original virus that are beginning to be actually new viruses. The same process is happening with narcissism. The wild type narcissism occurs in early childhood. It is the outcome of trauma and abuse, including behaviors which are not recognized widely as trauma and abuse, but are actually traumatic and abusive. If the parents does not allow the, the child to separate, to become an individual, to individuate, if the parents isolate the child from the beneficial impact of reality, don't allow the child to grow up, if the parents idolize the child, thereby generating in the child a grandiose defense, if the parents parentify the child, force the child to behave as an adult and to become their parent, all these behaviors, spoiling, pampering, all these behaviors are actually abusive because they breach the boundaries, the emerging boundaries of the child. At that point, some children become viral. They develop a wild type virus, an original virus, that we call uh, second, uh, primary, primary narcissism turned secondary. So this is a type of narcissism that is already pathologized. As these people, as these children grow up and become ostensible adults, they actually remain children for the rest of their lives. The core, the core wild type virus of narcissism is always there, 
and that's what they can never grow up. But they give a good imitation, they give a good show of being adults. So as they become adults, or pseudo-adults, or imitation adults, as they emulate adults, the virus of narcissism mutates because they have to adapt. They have to adapt to circumstances, they have to adapt to objects, to other people. They have to adapt to expectations, they have to adapt to social mores, to the law. I mean, numerous constraints act on the wild type viral narcissism. So the narcissism itself mutates. Now, if the narcissism is antisocial, for example, the mutations weaken the narcissism. And psychopathic narcissists, antisocial narcissists, get rid of most of their narcissism spontaneously by the age of 45 or 50. But if the narcissism is not antisocial, not psychopathic, the mutations lead to isolates, lead to variants. And these variants are more self-efficacious than the original wild type. Narcissism in the vast majority of cases becomes more dangerous, more transmissible, more lethal, more deadly, more risky as time passes because it, mut it mutates into variants. We will discuss in a minute why variants are more dangerous than the wild type. So narcissists evolve, shapeshift, change, transform in ways that render them much more ominous and dangerous. And finally, there are strains of narcissism, a typology of narcissists, somatic, cerebral, covert, inverted, etc., etc. All these strains are not evident in childhood. They are the outcome of cumulative mutations over the life of the narcissist. Moreover, exactly like in nature, narcissism combines with other mental health disorders. It disguises underlying conditions. It undergoes something which in virology, in genetics, we call genetic drift and antigenic shift. Let's go back to medicine uh, for a while. Viruses, as they mutate and so on and so forth, fluctuate. They change some of their genetic material subtly, imperceptibly almost. And this is the genetic drift. But sometimes they undergo a massive change in genes, in the genetic material. And this is called the antigenic shift they become effectively an almost completely new virus. Now, narcissism undergo both, both types of changes. Narcissism, as a virus, undergoes genetic drift. It changes minimally. It modifies behaviors. It, it keeps certain traits at bay. It emphasizes other traits depending on the circumstances and the expectations and the environment. But by and large, it's the same core of narcissism. There is identity disturbance. The core is unstable. But this is the stable feature of narcissism and other personality disorders, the lack of a clear core identity. And so, but gradually, as time passes, Many narcissists, and narcissism in general, undergoes an antigenic shift. The narcissist becomes something else. I have discussed this in my standard model of personality disorders, where I had suggested that there is no type constancy, that narcissists shift from an overt state to a collapsed state, and from a collapsed state to a covert state, and from a covert state to a collapsed state and back to an overt state. Similarly, they shift from a somatic state to a cerebral state, etc., etc. These are antigenic shifts. The differences between the subtypes of narcissists are sufficiently pronounced for us to say that it's a new type of narcissism. For example, a cerebral narcissist who becomes somatic, these two have nothing in common. It's like two different personalities 
two different identities, and I call it pseudo-identities, self-states. So narcissists literally shapeshift. They literally de become different people under different circumstances, in different environment, with, with, with different people. And this is the equivalent in virology, the equivalent in viruses of changes in the genetic material. Now, here's the problem. Genetic drift and more so antigenetic, uh, antigenic shift, what they do, they help the virus to disguise itself from the immune system. The immune system no longer recognizes the virus. It, there is immune, immunological evasion or immunological escape. The virus cloaks itself. The virus becomes invisible by altering itself sufficiently and by mimicry, by imitating cells of the body itself. These are very complex mechanisms. Now, let's apply them to narcissism. As the narcissist shapeshifts from one subtype to another, he gradually begins to evade your immunity. He begins to cloak himself. He imitates normal people, empathic people, loving people, compassionate people. It's a form of false advertising. He, he makes promises which are delusional and fantastic and in which he himself is invested emotionally. So it's not future faking. It's a shared fantasy. But consequently, you are unable to identify and recognize the narcissist. He puts on such an excellent show, especially the covert narcissist, that he evades your immune defenses. He, he kind of skirts, circumvents your antibodies. Never mind how many times before you have been exposed, you had been exposed to narcissists. Never mind how educated you are, how well developed your immunological response is. By shape shifting, antigenic shifts, by altering the bit, by, by transitioning between types, the narcissist and narcissism in general can evade anything you have to throw at it. You have become you, you become defenseless. So we're beginning to see that the analogs, the comparisons between viruses, viral, viral entities and narcissism are very apt and almost perfect. Another problem with antigenic shift. So the first problem is that it can evade your immune system, sort of penetrate your defenses, penetrate your firewall, intrude into your city under siege. The second problem is it can reinfect you. If you got sick with one strain of the virus and there's a sufficient number of mutations so that there are new isolates, new variants, let alone new strains, which have which had diverged considerably from the wild type original, I have a surprise for you. You can get reinfected. Even if you had COVID, for example, even if you were if you were ill with the original wild type virus, you can get sick again with a new strain, with a new isolate, with a new variant. You can get reinfected. Same with narcissism. Even if you had been exposed to a wild type narcissist and you had developed immune responses, you had acquired knowledge, your, your firewall is up and running, you have red alerts and red alarms, you are, you are hypervigilant, you're on your toes, you scan, you distrust, you mistrust. I mean, you're all primed to detect the narcissist by antigenically shifting by modifying behaviors and transitioning between types, as my standard model predicts, covert types, overt types, collapse types, by doing all this, the narcissist can reinfect you. The mimicry is one way of doing this. 
or simply becoming a totally different type of narcissist to which you had not been exposed. And so at that point, you can fall for it again. You can get reinfected. Moreover, the greatest danger in viruses is community transmission. It's when people transmit the virus to other people. The virus travels from one human host to another human host. This is community transmission. This is what we are trying to prevent with the various measures, measures now in place. We're trying to flatten the curve by disallowing the virus, not giving the virus access to this conveyor belt. There is community transmission in narcissism. Narcissists abuse you. Narcissists challenge you, attack you, push your buttons. Narcissists invade you via the chinks in your armor. Narcissists leverage your vulnerabilities. And you, your defenses are provoked, your immune defenses, psychological immune defenses, are provoked by the narcissist. And these defenses are actually narcissistic and psychopathic defenses. So when you're exposed to the narcissist, you catch the narcissism virus. You become mildly narcissistic and mildly psychopathic. But if your exposure is long enough, if the viral load of narcissism is long enough, is, is great enough, if you catch um, a lot of narcissism viruses, you know, your immune system crumbles, is overwhelmed, and then your narcissistic and psychopathic defenses go haywire. We have the same process in the human body. If the viral load is very high, the immune system goes hay haywire. And we have an autoimmune response known as a cytokine storm. Narci the narcissism virus can overstimulate your immune system if you're exposed to it for too long or too intensively or too extensively or repeatedly. This is complex trauma. And then your psychological immune system loses control in effect becomes hyperactive and your defenses render you a narcissist and a psychopath. This happens in borderline personality disorder when the borderline patient switches to a psychopathic, full-fledged psychopathic self-state known as secondary psychopathy, a psychopath with emotions and empathy. So narcissism can over-trigger your immune system so that you become a narcissist and in this sense it's community transmission the narcissism the narcissist passes his viral load passes his viruses on to you your immune system is provoked becomes hyperactive you become narcissist you abuse other people you become disempathic you become vicious antisocial you you lose impulse control you become reckless you become despondent, I mean, and then as you abuse other people, their immune system is provoked and there's no end to it. Community transmission is in place. What can you do? This is the background, borrowed from medicine, virology and epidemiology. What can we do against the narcissism uh, epidemic or now pandemic cuts across every culture, every society, every region. And it's been going on for decades now. What can we do against it? What we can do against it is what we do against real life viruses. Start with masks. Once a pandemic gets out of control, masking is obligatory. It's a powerful defense against pandemic that are ubiquitous and in cases of rampant community transmission. What is masking when the virus is a psychological virus? It's narcissism. What do I mean when I say you have to mask? Well, education, knowledge, learn, educate yourself, ask questions, be curious, exchange information, go to libraries, download books, get educated, becomes, become knowledgeable, 
about narcissism in all its facets and aspects. That's why I keep making videos about the workings and the machinations of the narcissist mind. Because I think that's the key issue. The key issue is not to say I'm a victim for me. The key issue is not to talk to other victims who will tell you you are a victim for you. That's not going to get you anywhere. You got to learn everything there is to know about narcissism. That's your only, that's your first line of defense. You got to mask yourself. Knowledge and education are the mask. Mask yourself against narcissism. Number two, social distancing. Keep away. Keep away from people who appear to have caught the virus. Keep away from people who belong to vulnerable, susceptible, naive population cohorts. Cohort is a group of population. So, for example, perhaps you should keep away from high-powered business executives, people in show business, people in specific professions, including, for example, law enforcement. I mean, narcissists gravitate to certain professions. Maybe it's a good idea to avoid these professions for a while. For example, when you're dating, you need to socially distance from population groups, cohorts, who are much more likely to catch the narcissism virus. If you are dating and someone tells you I've been abused as a child, my heart goes out to you, but sorry, I'm not going to continue to date you. If you are dating someone and he's a bit haughty and arrogant and mistreats the waiter, say goodbye nicely. Be alert. Be on your toes. Identify. Identify virus carriers. Identify super spreaders. Socially distance from these people. It's for your own good. Next, do not gather outdoors. What does that mean? Let me explain. In a typical viral situation, the advice is to gather outdoors. What it means in the case of narcissism, so my advice is gather outdoors. I'm sorry, I, I mispronounced, I misspoke. Gather outdoors, exactly like in a typical viral pandemic. What does it mean? It means keep everyone outside. Don't allow people within your perimeter. Don't let people breach your boundaries. Don't maintain secrecy about abuse. Everything in the open, everything outdoors, Everything you do should be visible to friends, to family, to colleagues. Um, keep your boundaries. Keep your private space. Don't trust so much. Don't be gullible. Don't be naive. Don't be susceptible. Be hypervigilant. Sorry, but that's the world today. Gather outdoors. You date outdoors. Outdoors, by the way, physically. Don't invite people into your personal private space until you're sure. Keep boundaries, keep limits, establish border police controls. Don't let in incoming flights without a PCR um, uh, test. You know, so when I say gather outdoors, arm's length, keep distance, hypervigilance, clear, firm boundaries and forcible. No secrecy, everything in the open, everything visible, everything known. Do not jump on the bandwagon too fast. Do not be love bombed. Do not allow yourself to be groomed. Do not move too fast in any relationship. Any attempt to push you to move faster than your, your instincts tell you, something's wrong. If it's too good to be true, is not true. If you feel something's wrong, it is wrong. Trust your gut instincts and keep them away, everyone. Everyone is assumed to have the virus until proven otherwise. It's exactly the opposite of the legal system. In the legal system, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. In our world today, which is a narcissistic, psychopathic civilization, everyone is assumed to have been infected with narcissism until he or she proves to you that they had not. Gather outdoors. 
wash your hands. Wash your hands. After every transaction, every encounter, every interaction, starting with one night stands, casual sex, and ending with, with dating or conversation, every contact, after every contact, wash your hands. And I don't mean your hands, of course, your literal hands. I mean your figurative hands. Sanitize. Sit, sit down. Analyze what had happened. Ask yourself questions. Listen to your gut instinct. Listen to the red alerts and alarms. Open your mind up and just let your stream of consciousness flow. You will know at the end of such a process whether you have come across an, um, a carrier of the narcissism virus or not. Wash your hands. Cleanse your consciousness. Take time. Take time. Take time. Take time out. Sit back. Relax. Be bored. Think about it. Let it flow. Give it a few days. Don't rush. Don't be terrified of loneliness. Don't panic. Don't panic because of anything. Don't panic because you're bored. Don't panic because you're alone. Don't panic because you're old. This would lead you to bad places. Wash your hands. Sanitize your soul. Cleanse. And when the surface is clean, anything that is unclean, anything that is contaminated and adulterated will stand out in stark contrast. Clean your background so that you can see the shapes. And above all, vaccinate yourself. Vaccinate yourself against narcissism. How do you vaccinate against narcissism? Is it enough to know about narcissism? No, that's masks. That's masking. Is it enough to educate about narcissism? No, that's a surgical mask. That's N95. One step removed, but still a mask. Vaccination is something else. Vaccination, what, what are vaccines? By the way, I have a video here about vaccines, how they're made, how they work, how they operate in the human body and so on and so forth. If YouTube hadn't taken it down in its infinite wisdom, it should still be here. It's a totally scientific uh, video, no conspiracy theories, just teaches you the primer. It's a primer on vaccination. It should be in the COVID-19 playlist that I have on this channel and on my Vaccine Musings channel. So what do vaccines do? Vaccine, there are two types of, there are several types of vaccines, but there are two type, two relevant types of vaccines. One is when we inject the human body with a weakened version of the pathogen, a weakened version of the organism that causes disease. It's so weak, it cannot cause the disease, but it's sufficiently alive to cause an immune response. That's one type of vaccine. Another type of vaccine, we take an element, a segment, a fragment of the pathogen, fragment of the virus, fragment of the bacterium, and we inject it into the human body or we inject to the human body a series of instructions on how to generate this fragment, mRNA. And then the human body generates this fragment or when exposed to this fragment reacts with an immune response. These are the two types of vaccines we have. And we should vaccinate against narcissism in exactly the same way. You should expose yourself to weakened versions of narcissists. And you should expose yourself to elements, fragments of narcissism. As your, so, as your psyche, as your mind, as your soul, if you wish, is exposed to a weak narcissist, a weakened version of narcissist, it will develop an immune response. It will be able to identify and avoid, shun stronger narcissists. And as your, as your soul or psyche or mind is exposed to an element of narcissism, it will develop an immune response. And whenever it sees this element or similar elements, it will avoid and shun the person who carries these elements. Let me be more, more precise. I suggest that you deliberately expose yourself 
to certain traits and behaviors, which are the hallmark of narcissism. For example, narcissists are grandiose. Expose yourself to arrogant, haughty, grandiose, grand, grand, uh, verbose uh, narcissists. Expose yourself to grandiosity. It's a very unpleasant feeling. Similar to getting a vaccine. You have side effects. But by exposing yourself to grandiose, haughty, vainglorious, grandiloquent people, you will have vaccinated yourself. You will have immunized yourself. And because grandiosity is common in 90% of the occurrences and manifestations of narcissism in in the human population, it's a good vaccine. It's similar to Pfizer. Pfizer is 95% effective, so they say. So, you know, exposing yourself to grandiosity and arrogance, that's 90% effective against the narcissism virus. Expose yourself to entitlement. Entitlement characterizes 60-70% of the population of narcissists, virus-infected, narcissism virus-infected people. So, if you expose yourself to entitlement, you have the Johnson & Johnson protection rate, 66%. So expose yourself to these traits. Entitlement, someone who demands, insists that he deserves your time, your resources, your money, special treatment, without investing anything, without committing, without doing anything to deserve any of this. That's entitlement. And the more aggressive the entitlement, the better off you are. I'm not telling you to expose yourself to narcissists. I'm not telling you to date narcissists or to get married to narcissists or whatever. I'm telling you to seek out people with narcissistic traits or what Lance Perry calls narcissistic style. These are not dangerous people. They are weakened versions of the narcissism virus. They carry a weakened version of the virus. They are simply narcissistic or as they used to be called when I was young, a-holes. Expose yourself to a-holes, you know, because they're grandiose and they're entitled. Put the two together and you will be able to avoid 90% of all future narcissists because your immune response will have been provoked and you will develop a variety of cells intended to cope with the narcissism virus, psychological cells. What kind of cells will you develop? If you seek out and interact on purpose with a vain, self-centered, grandiose, entitled, biak a-holes. You know, what kind of immune response should you expect? And how will this immune response protect you and defend you from future exposure to real, the real thing, full-fledged, nine criteria narcissistic personality disorder the strong the strong version the enhanced version of the virus not the weak version a hole is a weak version narcissist true narcissist npd is the strong version how being exposed to an a hole vaccinates you against being exposed to a true blue narcissist well you create exactly like in nature you create three types of psychological immune immune cells. Number one, antibodies. The Russians call it active measures. <laughs> antibodies are cells that go after the virus or the bacterium and kill it. Kill it or neutralize it. By exposing yourself to narcissistic people who are not narcissists, weakened versions of narcissism, or elements and fragments of narcissism without the full thing in context. By doing this, you will have created antibodies, psychological antibodies. These are elements in your mind, constructs and sometimes introjects, who will go after, after the narcissistic infection, the narcissistic contagion. Once the narcissist pushes your buttons, triggers you to narcissistic behaviors and psychopathic behaviors, your antibodies will wake up and prevent you from doing this. They will attack the narcissism virus and contagion and force you to disengage and detach from the narcissist. That's the antibodies. The second type of cells which are generated in the human body when you're exposed to 
real life virus are memory cells. These are cells that bear the memory of the virus. It's a library. It looks exactly like a library where there's a volume dedicated to each, each pathogen. A volume for this virus, a volume for this bacterium, and there are thousands of volumes. The minute there is a re-encounter or reinfection or community transmission of the same virus, the body takes the book out of the shelf, opens it, and here are the instructions how to fight the infection. These are called memory cells. And each memory cell is like a book in a library or a digital record in a database. And the book or the digital record contains instructions on how to fight the pathogen. Similarly, once you expose yourself to weak versions of narcissists, once you expose yourself to mere narcissistic traits and behaviors in isolation, not to the full-fledged version, but just to traits and behaviors in isolation, you will develop memory cells. You will develop a library. And the minute you come across the real thing, your psychology, your mind, will take the book off the shelf, will access the digital record, and there will be instru instructions there on how to disengage, detach, avoid, protect yourself emotionally, regulate your emotions, regulate your labile moods, etc., etc., build defenses, recreate the firewall, and rebuild an army of antibodies. You will see it's an immune reaction. You wouldn't be able to help it. And it would feel like egodystony. You will feel extreme discomfort. These are the side effects of the vaccine. Next time you meet a narcissist, having exposed yourself, because this is called exposure therapy, having exposed yourself to narcissistic elements, narcissistic fragments, narcissistic traits and behaviors, weakened version of narcissists, having done this, your immune system is in full operation. Next time you meet a narcissist, you will have an extreme discomfort. You'll be extremely ill at ease. And these are the side effects of the vaccine. Number three, you will develop, like in every human body exposed to a virus or a bacterium, you will develop cells that attack the cells in your body that were infected by the virus. So we have three types of cells. When the human body is exposed to a real-life virus, there are three types of cells. Antibodies, active measures, the guys who go after the virus and kill, him, kill it in a variety of ways, or neutralize it. Don't, al don't allow the virus to replicate or to activate. You have memory cells, which are like a library of how to, a how-to library, how to fight this virus, how to fight this bacteria. And you have cells that attack your own cells. It's an autoimmune response. Cells that attack, it's not exactly an autoimmune response, but it's an immune response that attacks your own cells. But not every cell in your body, just cells who are already, which are already compromised. Cells which already contain the virus. Cells where the virus is already replicated. So you will develop this third type of cells, exposing yourself to weakened versions of narcissism, exposing yourself to narcissistic traits and behaviors, you would develop this third type of cells. And these cells, psychological cells, will attack any part of you that had been infected. Any behavior, any trait, any speech act, any relationship pattern that had been infected by the brief exposure, even, to a narcissist, and they will kill it. They will destroy it. In other words, it's a self-healing self-repairing mechanism. By vaccinating yourself against narcissists in the way that I described, exposing yourself to limited isolated traits and behaviors, exposing yourself to weak narcissists, weak versions of narcissists, you will, have, you will have created three defenses, three immunological defenses. Active defense, pushing the narcissist away, avoiding and shunning the narcissist, killing all the narcissists, destroying all the narcissists' weapons before they hit the target, a library of memory on how to deal with future narcissists, even much bigger and stronger and full-fledged narcissists, and a defense which immediately will neutralize any contagion, any infection 
with the narcissism virus and prevent you from behaving, acting, talking like a narcissist. Ultimately, I believe the last few decades, we have seen an exposure of the general population to the, to the narcissism virus on the one hand, so we had seen enormous community transmission on the one hand, and on the other hand, we've seen herd immunity developing. We've seen a growing number of people becoming sensitized to narcissism, exposed to narcissism, aware of narcissism, protect against narcissism, defend against narcissism. So we are beginning to see herd, herd immunity, regrettably, after many hundreds of millions of people had already been infected and they are, one way or another, narcissists. Now, herd immunity uh, creates selective immunological pressure. It forces the virus to mutate in order to survive. Herd immunity means that the virus has difficulty to find ready hosts, naive susceptible hosts, because they are all immunized. They all, they all have immunological response on, in, at the ready. So when the virus tries to enter the body, it's destroyed, neutralized, cannot replicate. So the virus has to mutate, has to become much more aggressive, much more violent. And we see this happening. As herd immunity against narcissism, the narcissism virus, has developed, psychopathy is on the rise. Psychopathy is the mutation of narcissism. It's the aggressive variant of narcissism. It's transmissible and it's deadly. As we become immunized, as our defenses become stronger and stronger against cl the classic wild type uh, and even variants of narcissism, as we begin to spot narcissism, avoid narcissists, shun them, isolate them, defang them, deactivate them, prevent them from causing harm, and we take care of our own psychology, we see where we have gone wrong where we are acting as psychopaths and narcissists, as our immune system operates against the parts of us which had been infected as well. As all this happens, the virus of narcissism is going to be under enormous pressure to evolve, to change, to become more violent, more aggressive, because the number of hosts will have become much smaller, the competition, much fiercer and we are seeing a transition from classic narcissism in all its forms to psychopathy secondary psychopathy and more and more a growing number of primary psychopaths there are even scholars in academe who say that psychopathy is a positive adaptation good for us we should put them in charge i'm kidding you not and this is where humanity is going. And then we would need, with this new virus of psychopathy, to go through all the stages that I've just mentioned. There's community transmission. We would need to mask, get education. We would need to socially distance from them. We would need to gather outdoors, keep them out, not allow them into our private psychological and physical space. We would need to wash our hands after every encounter with these contaminated beings. And above all, we would need to vaccinate. What happens after that when we are immune to psychopaths? psychopaths? Anybody's guess. Many viruses, most viruses in human history, most bacteria actually in human history, just go away. When herd immunity is reached, the, the pandemic dies, dies out. Spanish flu, even the Black Death, the plague. So the prognosis is good. If we do our share, if we put masks on, educate ourselves with knowledge, we socially distance from these people, we isolate them, we render them ineffective, they are a reagent without a substrate, we gather outdoors, we get them out, we don't allow them into our private spaces, mental and physical, we wash our hands every time, and above all, we vaccinate against them, we're gonna win this war. Ultimately, narcissism and psychopathy 
will have become obsolete survival strategies. There will be always narcissists and always psychopaths, but these will be like schizophrenics. You know, people, unfortunate people, with a disease to be treated in facilities or medication, they will not have access to society as they do now. They will definitely not run society as they're doing now. We need to rinse, to cleanse, to purify human civilization. There is massive community transmission. We, the infection is rampant and we should act now. Vaccinate yourself so that you can contribute your share to this unfolding titanic battle, the real pandemic.